and paid my price. Death has brought me life. Death has brought me life. That's what we're getting ready to do right here. Jesus paid my price. I love him endlessly. I love him Because there's grace right here. There I stand. Lord, everything I am. the spirit is just flowing in the more early service at 8 30 and in the Sunday school hour the Lord was so real to us with his word when people gather together like we are right now God comes to be in our midst and I would just encourage you to keep your heart and spirit open to the Lord if you need healing or an answer to prayer just continue to worship him and let him direct your life. You can see miracles done before you leave today. And you can leave with your faith increased. That's why we want to welcome you here. And we welcome the Holy Spirit and the flow of God's Spirit to have his way. And we want to welcome you today. Because this is the day we have come to worship the Lord. We didn't come to be entertained. We didn't come to see who was here. We've come to worship the Lord. Don't you love God? Lift up your hand and just say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Just be seated for just a moment. Praise God. Keep your praise on your heart today. I remember when I first came in Pentecost, there were certain people that just kept praising the Lord, like Gary. You know, they, he just praised the Lord. And I thought, now that's a little out of order. Because I didn't know anything. A church where we went, we all sat real quiet and real still. And just the preacher did the service. But I went home with a girlfriend. And her mother was one that made so much noise in church. And we got home and I, we were in the living room. And I heard something in the kitchen. And it was this woman. She was going, hallelujah. I said, what is that? She said, that's my mom. I said, what's she doing? She said, well, she does that all the time. She praises the Lord all the time. And I said, let's go help her. We got in the kitchen. She said, oh, she was opening the oven door. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. She was opening up the oven door, put the bread in. She said, oh, hallelujah, before she got the bread in the oven. And I saw that. And all through that time of being in the kitchen, she was just worshiping God. She wasn't ashamed. She wouldn't let God go with her 24-7. You could call her any time to pray, and she was ready. Well, isn't it good to be in the presence of the Lord? Isn't it good to be here today? Let's thank the Lord for his presence. And we do welcome you this morning. We welcome you and thank you for being here. 
We just want to mention a couple of things. One is about our ladies' retreat that goes, starts next weekend, and there's still room if you want to go. You can sign up out in the foyer. Fr Francella Mays, pretty lady with uh, kind of reddish hair, she'll be out there at the table and will help you. And if you can sign up by tonight, then you can go. And there are many who'd like to go, but they don't have the funds. So if you are interested in sponsoring some of the ladies to go to the retreat, it is one of the highlights of your life to go where you can just be for two or three days praying and seeking God and reading His Word and hearing it taught. And it's just like you get caught up in God. And that's what the encounters are about, to encounter God. So if you want to go or want, if you can't go, you want to sponsor someone, see Francella. She'll be out in the foyer and she'll help you. And if the men go next weekend and they... Well, they need to sign up, too, and if you want to sponsor a lady or a man, that would be wonderful. You could be a blessing. It's $115 for a man or a woman. So please think about that and uh, take that on your heart. And then we have lots of things going on all week here at church. There's something going on every day and almost every night. But we, we were glad that you came today to worship the Lord, and we're going to be doing some wonderful things today. If you are new we would ask, like to ask you to please remain seated. If, you're, if you are one of our guests today, just remain seated. We're going to all stand at this time all over the building. And our connectors are coming down the aisle to give you a connector's card. Please fill that out and put it in the offering plate. Just remain seated. Down front, ladies, there's some right here. And put that in the offering plate. We'll have a record of your visit. And if you are interested and need spiritual help or anything like that, Please, you can mark the card. Someone will get in touch with you and help you. And put it in the offering plate then when it comes around shortly. Now we want you to get out in the aisles and shake hands and greet one another. And God bless somebody and give them a hug or a hello. Thank you for coming.
Till 
come and pour over me till all I see is your unfailing love. Hallelujah. Your unfailing love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your unfailing love to us. Lord, we honor you this morning as we hold the elements in our hands for communion. We honor your presence in your house this morning. We recognize that you are here fulfilling your word that says wherever two or three are gathered together, there you are in their midst. We honor you this morning and we give you praise. You know, you hold elements in your hands. I can't help but think about these, the bread and the, the wine, and how that while, I was, while we were singing, I was thinking about how Jesus felt to find a way to include us in his crucifixion. On the night that he was betrayed, on the night that he was with his disciples in the upper room, he had been sharing with them about what was going to take place. He was moved to give them something that would, that would, always, that would always be a part of what he did for them, something to remember. And I thought while we're standing with the elements in our hands this morning, and I want them in my hands. He found a way to include us 2,000 years down the road. We're holding the very elements. This is not a churchy thing. It's not something a pastor created or a church created. You're holding in your hand the elements that Jesus gave to the church. Jesus came up with communion. And as we hold them in our hands this morning, Paul was writing, and I like his version of it rather than going back to the Gospels because Paul's like us. He was just a benefactor. And he said, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Would you do that with me? Thank you, Lord, for the body that was broken. When you gave your life, talk about unfailing love. You came and you took on humanity, you took on flesh, and you gave your life for us. And after the same manner also, he took the cup which he had supped, saying, which when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it. In remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Would you take just a moment and really, really consider what you're about to drink symbolically representing the blood of Jesus Christ a memorial to what he did for you and for me in washing our sins away there's no there's no cleansing there is no washing without the blood of Jesus he took the cup and he blessed it and they drank
And so that night as they were around the table with Jesus and he instituted the Lord's Supper and he gave us something that, that we would always be able to be a part of. Like I said, it's amazing to me. I hope you get what I'm, what I'm trying to describe. Jesus gave us something on the night he was betrayed that we just shared together 2,000 plus years later. We're a part of that. He brought us into the story. He brought us into the New Testament and gave us a way to be there. And we're there right now. He said, as often as you eat this bread, as often as you drink this cup, remember what I did. He didn't want us to ever get the idea that we can save ourselves or that the church somehow does that or a preacher or that we'll ever be good enough. How many of you know he wants us to always remember? Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh. honor the presence of the Lord in this house. We thank you, Jesus, for finding a way to include us. We thank you that all of it was for us. We remember today what you did for us, Lord, the crosses on our churches, the crosses that hang around our necks, the Bibles we hold in our hands, the worship songs that we sing. It's all because of the love of Jesus Christ, the unfailing love of God Almighty who gave His only begotten Son. Thank you this morning. We remember, and Lord, we'll continue to remember. We'll continue to stay on track. We'll continue, Lord, to remember in ourselves we can do nothing, but in Christ we can do all things. We'll remember that our salvation is the grace given to us by God through Christ. We'll always remember that our sins are washed away by the blood that you spilled at Calvary. And that eternal life is ours through the body that was broken. We honor you this morning. We thank you. And we look forward to that day when we once again stand in your presence and we share in your supper with you together, your bride with its groom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 There's a mighty river flowing. Come on. Yes. 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 Mighty river flowing. Yes. Oh, yes. In this place. There's a mighty river. In this place, I want to sing that one more time. There's a mighty river flowing, a mighty river flowing in this place. Do you sense it? There's a mighty River flowing, mighty river flowing in this place. And it's full of passion, full of power, full of glory, full of grace. Yes, it's full of passion, full of power, full of glory. If you have a need in 
in your life this morning. The pastors are coming to anoint you. And if you want them to pray for you, you're welcome to come right down, right now. If you don't want to come, if you have a need, just let it be known by lifting the hand. Lord, we praise you, God. We praise you, Lord. We exalt your name, Lord. I pray that you move on behalf of every hand raised this morning. Lord, we feel the river flowing through this house. God, give healing to their bodies, to their homes, to their finances. Lord, nothing is impossible for you. <laughs> There's a mighty river flowing. There's a mighty river flowing. A mighty river flowing in this place. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's full of passion. Full of glory. Full of power. Full of power, full of glory, full of power. Your river is full of grace. There's a mighty, mighty, mighty river. There's a mighty There's a mighty river flowing, mighty river in this land. Jesus. Jesus. I want y'all, I want you to join with me in prayer this morning. This is little Jacob. We have been praying for little Jake since he was born. This little sister, uh, Dini Pridemore, this is her grandbaby. This is Amber, his mom. And we want to, we want to pray for him. He has got, he has had just difficulty since day one. And he needs a miracle. God needs to provide for him a miracle. How many of you know God is able to do anything? As a church, we've been praying for this little guy, and we've been holding him up and keeping updates with him on Facebook. Maybe many of you have done that. But we've got him here in the house this morning. And I asked Amber if we could pray as a congregation. I mean, I want those who know how to do business with God. You know how to have faith and belief for a miracle. This young man needs a miracle. No other, no other, there ain't nothing else to say. He needs a miracle. So I need people who believe in miracles to stretch your hands towards this stage right now as we pray for little Jacob. Let's pray for him together. Father, we pray for Jacob. We lift him up to you.
We pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Let him feel the powerful presence of Almighty God in this house. We believe you for a miracle for him. We're believing, we're standing on the word of God and trusting, Lord, that you will provide. We believe it right now in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord. All glory and honor and praise to you. Your sacrifice is for our healing. Your atoning blood was for our healing, and we give you now the praise and honor for touching little Jacob. As I give him back to his mama today, I pray that you'll touch her and strengthen them together as a family. And be with them, O oh Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. As we look to the heavens, from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. We give you honor and we give you praise and we thank you today in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye, buddy. Make me a house of prayer. Oh, a house of prayer. Oh, Lord. Make me a your hands with me. Let's sing this out. Hallelujah. Make me a house of Someone see what's happening right now is we we've set an atmosphere for God's spirit to move he's moving in this house and it isn't up a preacher can't make that happen a choir can't make that happen when the Spirit of God is moving like he is right now 
I'm telling you, any number of things can take place. I'm believing right now for healing all across this congregation. I'm believing for marriages right now to be put back together this morning supernaturally by the power of God. I'm believing for provision for your family. I'm believing for God to give wisdom and grace and for there to be a miracle. How many of you need a miracle from God? You know it. You need a miracle. Right now, I want you to lift that other hand to God. And I want you to call out right now in Jesus' name. We believe you for miracles, Lord. We believe you. We stand on the promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We stand on your promise, Lord. Have it my soul. Have it my spirit, man. Lord, I give control. Hallelujah. Have it my mind, Lord. Hallelujah. Have it my soul. We ask you for healing this morning. And have it my we spirit, ask you, Lord, man. for your presence and Lord, power. Lord, I give you truth. Hallelujah. Have it my mind. Hallelujah. And have it my soul. It's amazing what the Lord is doing this morning. He's doing it totally different than he did at 8.30, but he's doing a work. Listen to this, Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. How many of you know this is the secret place? <laughs> this is the secret place. When you get into the presence of the Lord, 
when you absolutely are saturated by the Spirit of the Lord. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. I'm going to say it again. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You know what that says? Listen closely. Sometimes we don't catch those words. I'll abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When I'm standing in the shadow, that means he's standing in front of my circumstance. Are you hearing me this morning? God is standing in front of the enemy, standing in front of sickness, standing in front of trouble, standing in front of that trial, that storm you're going through. He's standing in front of it. My, I feel the Holy Ghost. Woo! And all I need to do is have faith. I look at the shadow and I know everything's going to be all right. When the disciples were distraught and they didn't know what to do, they're throwing things off the side of the boat. They're standing down there. They go down and they wake Jesus up. Jesus, do you not care that we perish? Some of you got up this morning. Lord, do you not care that we're perishing? Do you not care that we're going through trouble? Do you not care, Lord, about where I'm at? Do you see us, Lord? Jesus got up on the end of that boat and he stood in front between them and the storm. I, I said he stood between them and the storm. And he looks at the storms of our lives and he says, be still. Peace. Somebody need that word this morning right there. Peace. Be still. And in that moment, everything calmed down and everything was all right. And you know what? I think Jesus turned around and said, I'm going back to bed. There is peace in Jesus abiding in the shadow of the Almighty he looked at them and said why don't you have faith why don't you believe all throughout the scripture if you'll just believe what anything is possible is anything too hard for God I said, is anything too hard for God? Are you getting it? Just May the fire of my altar never burn out. May the fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. May the fire of my altar never burn out. of the Lord he is my refuge you know there are times when the anointing of the Lord the anointing of the Holy Spirit is so prevalent and strong that you can get up and just read scripture and that'll preach the best sermon you've ever heard I will say of the Lord he is my refuge, he's my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. I'll trust in the Lord who made heaven and earth. I'll trust in the Lord, my God. Cry out with me right now, say, my God, in him will I trust. Say it again, my God. In him will I trust. In him will I trust. Hallelujah. Surely. In him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver thee. In him I will trust. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Surely he shall deliver thee. 
Uh, you didn't hear me. See? You just got right back into familiar territory with the word. Surely. Not possibly. Not maybe. Surely. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. How many of you know the devil is like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour? That the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come surely to bring you life and life more abundantly. Oh, give him praise. Hallelujah. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Chaos, turmoil, fighting, can't get along, busyness, aggravation, in need. All those things of life that chew at us and try to destroy our faith. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare, the deceptions, the lies of the fowler. The fowler, he compares him to a vulture who just circles around your life every day. Just waiting to see if there's going to be any stink rise up. If there's going to be anything dead down there for that vulture to come down on. I'm telling you how many of you are alive in Jesus this morning. Alive in Jesus. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the vulture and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrows that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. It will not come near your house. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Because you have made him your living place. Because you live in his presence. Because you are committed and sold out. I'm talking about stuff you can put to the test. How many have ever had God to come through for you? in a miraculous way hallelujah there shall be no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over thee come on I'm telling you the devil does not want you to hear this I said the devil does not want you to get this he don't want you to know that God is your refuge he doesn't want you to hear that he's your fortress. He doesn't want you to hear that a thousand will fall at your side and 10,000 on your right side. He doesn't want you to hear that you are blessed, that you are blessed going in and you're blessed going out. He doesn't want you to know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. He doesn't want you to hear that. But if you'll hear it this morning, if you'll let it get down inside of you, It'll fight the battles that you've been fighting all by yourself seemingly for a long time and you'll see the victory which you haven't seen. Telling you if you'll understand, the devil doesn't want you to see this. He wants you to stay busy. He wants you to stay distracted. He wants you to keep pointing fingers at the church. He wants you to keep pointing fingers at people. He wants you to keep staying weak because everything you're basing all your religion on is all on man he doesn't want you to get your eyes back on Christ the one who went to the cross he doesn't want you to get the victory this morning he don't want you to hear this word you know how I know 
Don't you remember? The devil hates Psalm 91, Donnie. He hates it. He don't like what I'm reading right now. He's mad as fire. And that works because he lives in fire. He doesn't want you to hear about what happens. He don't want you to know the angels of God are dispatched. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. The devil says, no, don't tell them that. Don't tell them that it's all going to be all right. Don't try to feed them that. I got to keep them depressed. I got to keep them discouraged. I got to keep them doubting. I got to keep them looking down and looking at their brothers and their sisters. I got to keep them looking this way because if they dare start looking vertical, I'm in trouble. Oh, Rabbi, go for the time. You know how I know the devil hates it? He used this very scripture. In the wilderness, Jesus was there hungry. And the devil said, cast yourself down from here. Isn't it written that if you should dash your foot against a stone, God will send his angels? You know what that tells you right there? That tells you the devil hates that scripture. He tried to use that scripture to try to get Jesus to deny it. He's wanting you to deny that scripture. He doesn't want you to get that down in your heart and in your faith and let it stir up a fire inside of you. He doesn't want you to believe it. Hey, Jesus, you'll be okay. Just keep living your life. Just keep walking. Just keep staying right where you are. I mean, didn't God say? He hates it. He wants to twist it. He wants you not to believe it. But if you will believe it, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under your feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. What's his name? Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. How many of you know his name? His name is Jesus, Son of God, Savior, Refuge, Mighty Fortress, Bright and Morning Star, Lily of the Valley, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, the Day Star. Mm. I feel strength every time I say a new name. I am that I am that I am that I am. Oh, Ramakos, I am. Ilarabaya, Ramakos. Glory, glory, glory. You know his name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I said, He shall call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. I will honor him. With long life will I satisfy him. And the greatest part of the whole thing, are you ready? And show him my salvation. <laughs> Lift your hands and help me praise him this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We honor your presence in your house this morning. We give you praise and give you glory. We honor you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We magnify you. May the fire of my altar never burn out. Fire of my altar never burn. May the fire never burn 
now. Keep me strong, Lord. I believe in your name. I believe in your name, Lord. He's my rock. He's my fortress. power of God and we have a tendency to while we believe there should be order in all things done decently in God's house say amen. amen we believe that but we also live by one other little rule that says order subject to change by the Holy Ghost we believe that people come to God's house they come in need they come needing 
God to send them a message. They need they come to God's house in order, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Because there is strength in this house. There's healing in this house. There's deliverance in this house. There's salvation in this house. What you've seen this morning, what you're experiencing in this house, is you're experiencing what we would call a move of God. When he just kind of comes through a place. Amy, mom, turn and lay your hands on your daughter right there. I want you to stretch your hands towards Amy right now. She needs a healing miracle. I've told her we're going to seek God until we say it. And I, Lord, just call her name out to me. Would you pray for God to heal her body physically? In the name of Jesus. I'm going to come through here. What there is, is there's intercession that's going on in the house. How many of you know the Bible talks about intercessory prayer? There's an intercessory move of God going on. Intercession is happening right now. I want you, if you're comfortable, I want you to just turn to a friend or someone who's standing beside you right now. I want you to be very polite. I don't want you to, to get in their space. I want you to just very lightly make a, a nice contact with them, whether on their shoulder just right there, right there somewhere where you can just make a contact with them. And I want us to pray a prayer. The Bible says, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And it says, anointing with oil, praying the prayer of faith. Talks about that, that sickness will be healed. And so I'm believing right now that we are in a move of God, of intercession. And you are brothers and sisters together. We're called to carry one another's burdens. We're also called to pray for one another. I'm asking you right now to begin an intercessory type prayer for that friend. You don't know what their need is. You don't need to know. You just begin to pray right now for your brother or your sister that's here today. That God will just show himself mightily in their life. That if there are needs in their lives, whether that be healing or need of provision, need of blessing, that God will provide that for them. Jesus, would you pray Jesus, with me right Jesus, now all over this house? Jesus, Jesus, call his name. Jesus, Jesus, call his name. Make us a house. Thank you, Father. Jesus, Thank you, Lord, Jesus, for your presence. Call his Thank name. you for your power that Jesus, is at work in the lives of your people. We ask you to minister Jesus, today. Jesus, the presence we of call your, your name. Make us a house of your house of prayer. In Jesus' name. Let victory in his name. Let strength be there. Marriage is come back together in his let your name. work be accomplished. I pray in the name of Jesus. Victory in his name. I thank name. you, Father, for your work that is done. Make us a house of prayer. Jesus, we give you honor. We give you praise. Victory is in his name. Victory is in his name. Thank you, Father. Victory God, is in his name. Make us a house of prayer. Lord, make us a house. Make us a house. Praise your name, Jesus. Praise your name, Jesus. Lord, Lord make, make us me. a house. Make, make me us a house of prayer. A house of prayer.
much or more scripture read in this service than we have in normal Sunday sermons. Read all of Psalm 91. I'm going to read now what I feel this, the Spirit has put on my heart. He just spoke to me and said, okay, read this. Because this is the result of trusting, caring, giving yourself every problem, every concern, not being afraid of the enemy, not being afraid of the arrows that fly by day, nor the terror by night, to know that God's going to take care of you, clear down to dispatching an army of angels if necessary, lest you even dash your, you will not even dash your foot against a stone, but heaven don't know. Because thou hast made him your habitation because somebody in here today and I, apparently a lot of folks have been in a prayer prayer assembly you've been in a, you've been praying and you've been believing and you've been asking God to do this today his word as the basis of this move of God and then now his word brings what he dropped into my spirit as now this is what happens when Psalm 91 is your habitation. Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord in the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To point unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The oil of joy. I said the oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified hallelujah do you see what that says it goes over here it says the Lord's anointed me to preach good tidings. In other words, good news. Good news. Sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Good news. To any brokenhearted folks in here today. Well, this service was for you. Sent me to broke, bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Those that feel like they're bound up, those that feel like they're trapped, those that feel like there's no way out, there's no answer, there's no deliverance, there's nothing. that You know, you almost feel like David when they said, who is coming to help you? And the opening of the prison to them that are bound, opening of the prison, perhaps addictions, habits, hang-ups, troubles, trials. God is anointing the Spirit of the Lord to move in your behalf this morning. To comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for their ashes. The oil of joy 
for their crying. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. How many of you know depression is attacked this morning by the Spirit of God? That they might be called trees of righteousness. Trees planting. The planting of the Lord. Solid. On a solid rock. Absolutely firmly planted. No longer tossed to and fro. No more in confusion and doubt. You will absolutely be satisfied in the presence and power of God planting of the Lord and of course that he that he will receive all the glory, all the honor all the praise God gets the praise Amen so that when we get to Revelation chapter 5 we get to stand with the elders and the angels and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive honor and riches and wisdom and glory. We will stand together with the saints, with the angels of God. Somebody say amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I can prove it to you. In that book right over there is 19 pages of a sermon I have prepared for this morning. But I am looking at Psalm 91 and Psalm 61 and saying, I believe the Lord has preached a better message. If you're visiting with us, this kind of thing doesn't happen very often. I mean, not that we wouldn't want it to happen, but we love it happening. But we do preach around here a real, like, you know, a pastor sermon. And we do take an offering. You know, I woke up this morning and I was on my way to church. And I looked up at that sky and I looked up at the trees and I said, Lord, I just. I don't want to just go to church. I want to embrace you. I want your presence. See, I believe in purpose. You've heard me preach this. I believe in knowing our purpose. We're purpose driven. Moses knew his purpose, David knew his purpose. I believe in purpose. But I also agree with Moses who said, well, I know my purpose. I know what I'm supposed to do. But he looked up to the heavens and he said, if you don't go with me, don't send me to my purpose. The presence of the Lord. First and foremost, we are driven by the presence of the Lord to our purpose. Amen. Amen. Stand with me all over the congregation. Well, we've done it backwards. Done it in his order. Our ushers are going to be standing at the, at the three side doors. And we're going to let them stand by the doors. And as you leave today, if you're prepared to to pay your tithe and to give to world missions to give to our building pledge your promise then we want you to feel like you can do that I'm just going to trust the Lord on that we're not going to sit you down and come to your pew and we're just going to trust you on that that's between you and the Lord and we'll make that available for you as you leave the sanctuary but I want you to bow your heads with me for a moment because I also believe in the purpose one of the missions of our church which is the great commission of Jesus Christ who when he also said in his word many different places that he's come to seek and to save that which is lost if you're here today and you don't know Jesus but you've sure sensed the moving of God's spirit and you've felt the presence of God here today and you need Jesus as your Lord and your Savior 
I'm going to ask you to make the biggest decision of your entire life. What are you doing with Jesus Christ? What are you doing with the truth of Calvary, the cross, salvation, eternal life that was purchased for you? Have you dared to examine your own decision concerning Jesus? With every head bowed and every eye closed, just for a moment so that folks can make an honest evaluation without distraction. Do you know him as your Lord and your Savior? If you need to pray this prayer, we're going to pray a prayer right now. A prayer that is just words if it doesn't come from your heart. But if it comes from your heart, the Bible says if a man believes in his heart, confesses with his mouth that Christ Jesus is Lord and he is saved. So we're going to pray a prayer that prayed from your heart, confessed from your mouth. is going to bring a brand new born again experience into your life. It's going to happen right now. If you're here today and you need Jesus, would you simply just lift up your hand and then write back down? God bless you. One, two, three, four. Anyone else? Five. I only count you because you count. We're not turning the number in to anybody. We just want to know if you're here to pray that prayer. Anyone else? Five hands have went up already. Is there anyone else? I need Jesus, Pastor. There you go. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone? God bless you. I see your hand, son. Amen. Anyone else? That's eight. Nine. God bless you, sister. Ten. God bless you, sister. When people want to come to Jesus... That's proof in the pudding that the Lord has definitely been in his house and the Holy Spirit has been at work. Ten folks, is there anyone else? I'm going to wait just a few more seconds. God bless you. Anyone else? Am I missing someone? God bless you. Anyone else? These lights are real bright. I might have missed you. God bless you. All right, I've officially lost count. So let's just give them all to Jesus. We're going to pray a prayer right now. Again, pray from your heart before heaven. This will change your entire life. This is Melissa Grawl standing in the altar. She is our discipleship pastor and she wants to meet with you. If you would come by, she'll be making herself available down here in the altar. She would love to give you a Bible. She would love to talk with you, share with you just a few moments. She won't take up much of your time. She just wants to be a part of helping you in your new walk with Jesus. She wants to get you started in the right direction and give you some helps. So if you'd see her right after service, she'll wait right down here at the altar for you to come by. The church, we're going to take a bunch of folks to Jesus this morning. And I want you to help me as we do this together. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I accept you as my Savior. I know that you died on the cross for me. You rose from the dead. You purchased my salvation with your blood. I believe this in my heart. I confess this with my mouth. Be the Lord of my life. And so according to your word, I'm born again. I am saved through Jesus and in his name. Amen. 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 Wow. You can't plan something like this. What a good, good time to be in the house of the Lord. I trust that you will be blessed today, strengthened today. That the Lord will touch your life. And remember, as you are leaving, go by the, the information desk and, and be sure and...